there's two general schools of like economic thought, right? One is uh, uh, Austrian school, which essentially preaches that, <clears throat> you know, savings uh, is a virtue. Uh, you know, savings is what provides you with capital investment in order to help, you know, entrepreneurs start businesses that the uh, rate of interest in the market, which is essentially the cost of borrowing money should be set by the market, meaning it should be set by the amount of supply of money that is out there to be lent and the demand for people that want to borrow money. Um, and, you know, the Keynesian school advocates, and this is a loose definition, advocates more for uh spending uh they they judge the economy by how much money is currently being spent regardless of what your balance sheet looks like which is why we have a country that's 28 trillion dollars in debt yet we still focus on spending and the amount of consistent you know it's like this hamster wheel the the keynesian system right where you just have to keep spending and spending and spending and you have to keep looking at jobs at all costs but whatever you do don't look at the balance sheet don't look at how much debt we're accruing to do that um and the keynesian system kind of advocates uh, that spending is the virtue and that, you know, the market rate of interest should be determined by the central bank, mm. uh, which is what happens when you hear the Fed is, you know, raising or lowering interest rates um, and essentially more that the economy needs to be uh, micromanaged. Um, and so what we've what we're seeing now, what our economy and our stock market are now are products of a uh, global macroeconomic system that has been. Uh, micromanaged by central banks and politicians and essentially the elites uh, globally. If you were to strip away all of that nonsense and jargon and bullshit that comes with Keynesian economics and you just wanted the uh, markets and the global economies to rest on the natural laws of economics, things like supply and demand, right? The blocking and tackling of, of economics, free markets, uh, you know, capitalism, lower regulations, lower taxes, um, then you would see a completely different uh, economy and completely different uh, global, um, you know, capital markets than you do now. Uh, and so the, the difference between the two is essentially, you know, the Austrian school is more conservative economic thought, more old school, you know, your Friedrich Hayek, uh, your Friedman, those types of guys, uh, and your, your Peter Schiff. Um, and your Keynesian school is your, you know, your Paul Krugman's, your modern monetary theory people, uh, the people that go on MSNBC and argue that, you know, we can inflate away the debt, that we can pay off our debt by taking on more debt. Um, and so it's this big argument about whether or not the, you know, the system we're in now is doing more harm than good in the sense that it might be blowing up an enormous bubble every time we have a recovery and we do something to stimulate the economy instead of taking the medicine and allowing the economy and the market to correct the way that it needs to, the way that it's begging to, um, that if we paper over that, like we did in March of 2020, is that eventually going to do more harm than good? And that's like the, the conflict between the two schools of economic thought. The Keynesians will tell you in a situation, uh, you know, like March 2020, where we shut the whole country down. Keynesians will tell you that, oh, we did the right thing because we essentially papered over the entire economy by printing four trillion dollars, putting it on the Fed's balance sheet and, you know, essentially changed the tire of the vehicle of the economy as it was traveling down the highway at 90 miles an hour, uh, you know, and kind of allowed the car to keep moving despite the fact that, you know, it doesn't have the uh, the uh, the regulation size tire on it anymore. And the Austrian school would say, hey, if you shut down the country, uh, of course, fucking economic data is going to look like shit. And of course, the country is going to go into recession because you're closing all these businesses and you're telling people to fucking stay home. And so the market needs to absorb the reality of that situation. And markets do need to crash and they do need to come lower because that 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 wipes out malinvestment. It wipes out, you know, uh, bad behavior. And and so and then eventually from there, they would argue that the recovery uh, from taking the medicine, enduring the pain would be a healthier recovery than the one that we've kind of put in place here um, that many people, myself included, will will advocate for the idea that this is eventually going to do more harm than good. We are we're relying on printing dollars. Mm -hmm. That's essentially it. We're not bringing enough in in tax revenue in the country to pay for all of the bullshit that we want to spend money on, uh, whether it's social services, you know, all of our spending, the spending that we need to do to keep the country acting as though it's open even though it's closed that costs a fuckload of money yeah. right 
So that money has to come from somewhere. And if it's not coming from taxes, we have to print it. And if we're printing dollars, the supply of dollars expands. And ostensibly, fucking old school people like me will say that eventually that's going to wear away at the value of the dollar. And that's going to be a negative. So far, that hasn't happened in any catastrophic sense yet because the dollar is the reserve currency globally. But people like me would argue, hey, we're on an unprecedented path. And we don't know what the outcome is going to be. So instead of being arrogant and saying, hey, we can just rely on fucking essentially like game genieing the the entire economy by printing money. Maybe we should step the fuck back and, you know, not let our hubris get the best of us here and approach this modestly. And so what's happened now is the Fed has painted itself into a corner. On one hand, the Keynesian response to March 2020 is creating insane amounts of inflation, right? We're seeing just in the official numbers, which are completely understated, and that's a whole other discussion. Just in the official numbers, the cost of living is going to rise close to 10% this year for the average American. That means if you're not earning 10% more in dollars, your quality of life is diminishing. The you know essentially what the difference is between what your raise in earnings is and what the raise in your cost of living is right, so it has to deal with that because that's now becoming an enormous issue on both sides of the political spectrum. It's out there. It's in the mainstream media. So and uh, so uh it can't raise rates though, right? Raising rates is how you would fight inflation because when you raise interest rates, it takes dollars out of the supply it forces people to put dollars in the bank because they they can get a yield from then like saving again so it encourages saving it discourages speculation in like the stock market and in risk assets and that's normally like when Paul Volcker was fed chair and he had to raise rates to 20% that's how you would fight inflation we can't do that because as a nation we wouldn't be able to service our national debt if we raise the interest rate on our national debt, we can barely service it now. So when you look at like our budget annually, we pay something like, I don't know, maybe a trillion dollars, maybe $800 billion, just in interest on the national debt. So now we are, you know, fuck tangled in this like box where we can't really get out in either direction. Um, you know, and the Keynesians will say, all right, well, we can figure out a way we can print our way out of it, you know, somehow and things aren't completely fucked yet. This is why you see MSNBC saying, well, the inflation's a good thing. It's like, bitch, your president is out there complaining about fucking high oil prices. Like, obviously, it's not great in the oil market, right? Meanwhile, this fucking genius, okay, the president of the United States is out there complaining about the price of oil with one hand, and with the other hand, he's signing fucking uh, you know, legislation that's shutting down oil pipelines in the United States. And he's wondering why prices are going up. It's like numb nuts, supply and demand, economics 101, right? Like fifth grade education math. That's all you need for that. And, and then, so anyways, that's the general gist of yeah. uh, the Austrians versus the Keynesians. 